today, I'm going to be attempting to beat Halo 1 Legendary as a Marine. That's right. Now, you may be asking, why would someone with a total disregard for their own life attempt to do something like this? And I'll tell you the truth. I have no idea. Questioning my sanity aside, those of you who are familiar with Halo know that Legendary difficulty is no joke. It is the hardest difficulty in the game, and it is designed to be a real challenge even for experienced players. So to attempt it as a Marine, well, let's just say it's going to be interesting. We're going to use the Halo CE Infantry mod created by Dreary Muscle 5. The link is in the description. As we jump into the game, you notice right away, playing as a Marine is a whole different experience. The game is played in third person, with some weapons with scopes being in first person. You also have the health and animations of the Marine, whereas the Master Chief had his shields and a buffer of health to tank any damage. As a Marine, I have none of that, and my body is more brittle than my crusty socks at the bottom of my wash basket so I'll have to rely on wits and strategy in order to survive. Both, I have none of. The mod description even says that this mod is hard and is recommended to be played on normal, and that heroic and legendary are for the strongest of wills. Regardless, I was feeling pretty confident. Having played Halo 1 an offensive amount of times, I knew how to tackle legendary difficulty. But, being a simple marine, it now meant that I was about to have my human rights violated, but I wasn't one to back down from this challenge. After getting woken up by sexy anime waifu, I noticed something was... off. I was a Spartan. Turns out that mission one of this mod has you playing as an Orion cyborg, and not a marine. But this is a start to finish run, so we're just gonna roll with it. Turns out this fancy armor means nothing though, as I still get shredded apart faster than you could say, Cortana, I'm feeling submissive. What? Every hit felt like a sledgehammer to the face. Any mistake could be my last. This run was all about trial and error, and let me tell you, there was a lot of errors. Fuck! By making my way down some corridors, I had a brief handshake with Captain Keys. Good to see you, Master Chief. I then proceeded to steal his external hard drive filled with porn. Giggling like a schoolgirl, I made my swift getaway through the canteen towards the escape pods. It turns out the Covenant were also after the hard drive, as they came crashing into the ship just to get close to it. I would have to find another way off the ship. Exchanging some pleasantries with some nearby Covenant, I made my way up the stairs and down some more corridors. After spending some time in the vents, my crewmates were starting to become more sus of me. I emerged out, introducing a group of coveys to a plasma grenade, and then ended up getting my cheeks slapped by a nearby elite. <laughs> Attempt number two had me throwing more grenades than I'd like to admit, but I finally made it to an escape pod. We were finally off the ship. Upon crashing onto the ring, Cortana seems to have hit her head a bit too hard. Chief? Chief, can you hear me? It appears she failed to notice that the Chief was taking a permanent nap on the floor. But before the Chief clocked out for the day, he handed us the Captain's external hard drive. It was up to us to keep it safe. Okay, now the run had officially begun. Taking a short hike up the hill, I started to get harassed by the local wildlife, aka Banshees. Do you honestly think you're fucking funny? Coming across our first encounter as a marine, it was here that I realised what I had actually signed up for, as this elite kicked my ass more times than I'd like to admit. It was as if this elite had a personal grudge against me. <coughs> Getting past that, we meet up with Sergeant Chad Johnson, who told us that he had called an Uber and was waiting to be picked up. After hanging out with Johnson and the boys for a bit, we were soon interrupted by some nosy neighbours. Dealing with what felt like endless waves of Covenant, Johnson was killed for the first time in this run. But don't worry, we will be seeing him again. The Uber had finally arrived, it turns out they had picked up someone before us, but they were going to the same place we were, so we named our new friend Dave and set off. Coming across more coveys, me and Dave set to work. With my amazing driving skills and his massive weapon, we were truly a force to be reckoned with. After throwing what must have been an illegal amount of grenades, I activated the bridge and we were able to continue on our adventure. While me and Dave were on a romantic drive through the countryside, we came upon another crashed escape pod. Trading in my trusty plasma pistol for a sniper rifle, I did some sniping on some elites, before heading down to collect the first lot of marines. Spoiler alert, they did not survive. Moving on to the next set of marines, I actually died here a few times for some reason. Maybe my monkey brain thought I was untouchable, but that was far from the truth. Dave, on the other hand, was on a killing spree. He managed to mop up the remaining Covenant, and we were able to move on to the last lot of Marines, who were taking cover behind Dwayne the Boulder Johnson. Somehow, I died here again, as I got my hog stuck within the rocks. 
As the dropship started to arrive, I activated no clip on the Warthog and was able to kill some of the enemy reinforcements before they even had a chance to touch the ground. Everything seemed to be going in our favour. But then, tragedy struck. Dave, our lifelong heterosexual life partner, who had been on this whole adventure with us, was killed. I was heartbroken. I was angry. Our friend, who I had spent the last half an hour with, was no more. After wiping away the tears, I went on a vehicle killing spree in name of Dave. And then, it was over. But at what cost? After mourning the loss of my best friend and rounding up some of the Lost Boys, we finally got picked up by Echo 419. Now we could see what it was all for. What was on the captain's hard drive. God damn it! It seems that the captain was no fool. He had set a password so we can't get access to the hard drive. So I decided to launch a rescue mission in hopes to get the password off the good captain. Upon getting dropped off, I noticed that this rescue team was wearing something a little more... eye-catching. Flashing the ODST armor, we have received a 69% increase to our sex appeal. Despite having worse aim than a stormtrooper, I was able to clear out the first area, making way for our band of merry men to move on with the mission. Things were looking good. That was until an elite shot me point blank with his needler. I rapidly learned that the Red Elites, aka Mages, were going to be an issue moving forward. Nah, who am I kidding? They've always been an issue. Not only were they the cause of most of my deaths thus far, they also took two sniper shots to the head to put down on Legendary. Sometimes three. Coming up to the grab lift, I decided to change tactics and charge in. Up to this point, I was playing it safe, but my little goblin brain wanted a health pack on the far side of the area and I had to snatch it up before the local residents of the ship came out to yell at me to get off their lawn. While making my getaway, I had the rare event that happened on Legendary. Cortana to Echo 419, requesting reinforcements at our position. Cortana called in backup. Normally on a lower difficulty, when all your marines get unalived, Cortana will call in for more. On Legendary, this is a rare thing to happen. I was so shocked that I had to pause the game to check to see if I was still on Legendary. I was. Being reinforced made this a lot easier, as the Covenant were more focused on the others instead of me, and no wonder, as one of the Marines was none other than the man himself. Hunt him down, Marines. Sergeant Johnson had respawned to join the fight once more. Ironically, after all the fighting, it was just me and him left when the Hunters decided it was time to crash our little reunion. Because of the way Halo 1 is, it is considered a headshot if you shoot the Hunter in their orange exposed parts with a sniper rifle or magnum, and they will go down in one shot. Being a fragile marine, you're damn right that I abused it when it came to the hunter parts. Hey, it's not my fault Bungie designed the game like this. After our swift victory, it was time to part ways with Johnson once more, as he remembered that he'd left his armor on, and made his exit just as more ODSTs got dropped off. It filled me full of confidence that I would get to see Johnson again. So much so, that I T-posed to assert my dominance as I entered the ship. This area highlighted yet another challenge for us. On Legendary, we are greeted with more sword elites than I like to count, causing several blood vessels to burst simultaneously. <coughs> After a number of attempts, I tucked my tail in between my legs and left my marines to get slaughtered as I took pot shots from a nearby doorway. I was in this hallway long enough to claim squatters' rights. The gold elites clearly took offense to this and made it their mission to cut me out. Literally. <laughs> After getting evicted from my hallway, we put on our heelys and glide our way towards another large room. I found myself claiming yet another hallway as I mowed down any nerd that came towards me. I kept dying here to goddamn jackals rapid firing at me. Several deaths and one burst blood vessel later, we came up to the ship's hangar bay. As the saying goes, don't change what isn't broken, or something like that. I once again found myself cowering down another hallway, taking pot shots at anyone who came close, and sniping hunters in the back like a real man, until Cortana decided to open up the doors so I could leave. We gobbled up the last of the health kits, bringing us up to full health. That lasted all of five seconds before I died again. Well, I say died. I read to reset the checkpoint. Before coming up to the third floor, everything for a change was pretty straightforward. I actually felt like I was enjoying this challenge. I was living my best life, having a laugh and having fun. And then I wasn't. I ended up on one health and made the foolish decision to not reset the checkpoint. This was a mistake that led to death after death. For the next 20 minutes, I was struggling, being sandwiched harder than Jill Valentine in between Barry and Chris. What are you talking about? I kept finding myself getting gunned down by a grunt. 
or an insufferable pistol goblin. Bro, I'll tell you what, you fat little c After almost committing a war crime, I found out that I couldn't jump on the spirit without dying, and made my way back up and took out the cubbies Metal Gear style. With my new art for stealth, I snuck up to the bridge and quietly took out an elite with an anti-material rifle, before losing a 1v1 with the golden boy. Once we've made it to the holding cells, I T-posed in front of the captain and the rescued marines, claiming myself as the dominant alpha male. This had clearly upset some nearby elites, as two of them instantly came in and clapped my cheeks, claiming the title of the most dominant alpha male on the ring. After a battle of dominance, and a little backtracking, we finally got the captain back to the hangar. Instead of letting Cortana drive, the captain took it upon himself and crashed the ship into a wall, marking himself as the worst getaway driver. After a quick pee break and a call to my therapist, Mission 4 kicks off with us storming the beaches of Normandy. And by us, I of course mean the Marines. All I did was hang back and snipe with my pistol. To my surprise, we did not lose a single Marine in the battle. Hey, that's pretty good. Once my Amazon Prime order was delivered, we set off towards Mickey Mouse's clubhouse, which had a few unwelcome guests. Dave 2.0 ended up taking a plasma grenade to the face. What the f <laughs> Leading to the flipping of the Warhog and my swift execution. Coming back for round two, we managed to mop up these nerds camping inside, resulting in us getting locked out of the clubhouse. Taking the rejection like a champ, we had the great idea of shutting down the island's security system. That way, how can they lock the door if there is no lock? While me and the boys were on a lovely drive down the beach, it was here that I saw something that brought a tear to my eye. Not one. Not two, but seven jackals. This run had made my hatred of the flightless birds to increase so much that any time I see them, my blood boils. I took advantage of the second hog, and me and Dave 2.0 put more bullets down range, faster than my friend swiping right on Tinder. Moving to the interior of the island, we quickly take out a pair of hunters before getting assassinated by another flock of jackals. Seriously, this mission has so many jackals. So many, in fact, that I would let out an audible groan each time I saw them. But I had a plan. It was pretty complicated. But step one, hide behind anything that could provide cover. Crates, walls, even a foot-high rock became my best friend. And step two, pray that the Covenant's aiming skills were as bad as my fashion sense. It wasn't a great plan, but it's all I had. The plan seems to be effective, as a mass genocide on the Kigyal species soon followed. Heading inside, we take down two more hunters, Honestly, this tactic is so broken. We managed to disable the island security system, finally giving us access to Mickey Mouse's clubhouse. That led to us instantly getting clapped by a bunch of stealth elites. After dishing out a can of whoop ass, we began to backtrack to our warhog when we got jumped. <sighs> by more jackals. Fuck! Honestly, I swear to god, if this game throws any more jackals at me, it's literally going to lead to me having a brain aneurysm. On the way back, we discover what must have been Captain Keys' landing attempt. I scrounge up a rocket launcher. Cortana said to use them on the hunters, but I had a better target in mind. Once we made it back to the clubhouse, we run over some of the locals and park up my car in front of the entrance doorway. This will come in handy later. Upon entering the location, we discover an elite too busy playing Miss Pac-Man to even notice us. So we do the right thing and hit him in the back. Making our way down the stairs, we clear out more bad aliens trying to stop us, but little did they know, this marine had the power of anime on his side. Honestly, I really didn't have much trouble getting down here. It was getting back that was going to be the problem. Once we had downloaded the location of all the single women in my area, we called an Uber to meet us outside. The backtracking had commenced. I'm not even going to lie to you, backtracking our way out here was a real test of my patience. As the jackals seem to have got wind of my earlier statement about using the rocket launcher to cleanse them off this ring. And they were upset about it for some reason, I have no idea why. After many setbacks and a few pro gamer moves, and by that I mean I threw a grenade at myself a few times, we managed to make it out of the basement where my parking skills from earlier came in handy as Dave 2.0 took out the elite showing off his golden bling. Upon making our way outside, we had a couple of stealthy boys who made the mistake of being on the receiving end of Dave 2.0. What a lad he was. We say our final goodbyes to Dave 2.0, get in our Uber, and with that, we can put this mission behind us. I'll be honest and say that I wasn't looking forward to this mission. Not only is this one of the longest missions in the game, but it has tons of Covenant, Banshees, Wraiths, Ghosts, 
and very few health kits with a great distance between them. I wasn't lying if I said the thought of this mission gave me jackal-based anxiety. But it turns out I had nothing to worry about, as I was able to clear out the first set of rooms without losing a single bar of health. Very poggers. It was here that I once again started to get a spot of bother from the local wildlife, coming back to get some revenge for me killing his mate at the start of the game, but we put an end to that very quickly. Up to this point, I had abused the pistol so much that I had run out of ammo, which wasn't good, as a group of jackals and a sword elite came rushing towards me, wanting to show me where he was going to stick his pointy thing. After having his glowy thing thrusted into me a fair few times, I was finally able to gun him down, and before I knew it, I was outside meeting up with Fireteam Zulu. We were making good progress. So much progress, in fact, that we made it to the tank in less than 20 minutes. Either the hand of God had taken over my keyboard, or I was finally getting good, as they say. Coming up to the tank, I laid my eyes on the mad lad himself, Sergeant Johnson. I knew that we'd see him again. With this sudden boost of serotonin to my brain, we mounted the tank and rolled into the next valley. Taking down the local postcode worth of wraiths and ghosts, I suddenly realised that I had made a mistake. I had forgotten about the banshees flying overhead. This mistake had led to a tragic moment. Johnson died once again, after taking a banshee blast square in the face. As upset as I was that he had perished once again, I had a small glimmer of hope that we'll see him again in the next mission, for one final time. As we came up to the second bridge of the mission, we rolled our 66 tons of titanium armor across with no issues. Well, apart from missing a grunt point blank with the tank's main gun, but that doesn't count. Upon exiting the tunnel, I show off my COD no-scoping skills as I hit this 180 with the tank's main gun mid-air and take out a hunter. Wow. I sadly had to leave my tank here as she was a bit too big to fit through these pillars. Can't make it. Can't make it. The shit's stuck. Out of my way, son! This next part I thought was going to be a real pain to do, but it turns out, just like the rest of this mission so far, it went smooth. And we didn't die. Seriously, has God taken over my keyboard or something? We say goodbye to our marines who had joined us on this epic adventure. But I will know I will see them again soon. Moving inside, we give the grunts and this elite a permanent nap before heading up the elevator. This next part, I will admit, gave my brain a rage-induced migraine. The combination of jackals and a gold elite with a itchy trigger finger seemed to cause me more issues than I would like to admit. But that was nothing compared to these two bridges. On top of the migraine, these two bridges were so bad that they were a serious threat to my long-term health. They were filled with jackals, elite mages, grunts with needlers, stealth elites, and to make it worse, I had hunters and little goblins shooting at me from the other bridge. Overall, these two bridges and the connecting rooms took me just over an hour and a half to get past. I died that much that I put the hell dives to shame with the amount of deaths that I racked up, and I die a lot on hell divers. Moving on, I came up on two hunters just chilling before I introduced them to a pistol that I had found lying on the floor. Honestly, this tactic is so broken. Well, that was my fault, until a couple of grunts decided to ruin my day and force me to reset the checkpoint, as there was no way I was dealing with the next bit on one health. I finally made it to the ice bridge where I was once again abused by the flying wildlife. Now, in normal Halo, I would grab the Banshee and fly to the top of the spire, but I was struggling to get out the door, never mind racing in the lead to the Banshee. So after around 15 minutes, I was finally able to leave the door, and I was debating internally if I should just jump down and run up the spire, but I might break my flagell legs doing so. So instead, I took the elevator down, killing some more coveys, found a hidden weapon stash, and stole a ghost to make my way to the top of the spire. This ghost made climbing this tower and ambushing the coveys behind the main door so easy. We entered the main control room in hopes to finally see what was on the captain's hard drive. How many of you forgot about that storyline? Because I certainly did. After trying to load what was on the hard drive, Cortana told us to go find the captain once again, as she forgot to enable the remember login details setting. Enraged, she demanded us to go and find him again. I, I honestly don't know where I'm going with this hard drive storyline, by the way. But, uh, yeah. Moving on. The serotonin being deployed to my brain in this moment had an expiry date of now. With the main causes of my deaths being from elite mages and goddamn tree turkeys, this mission had a lot of one of them, and I wish it was the elites. Getting dropped off by Echo 419, we can see that Captain Keys has been flying dropships again, as we can see two examples of his parking skills. You can't park this, huh? After getting put down by a jackals camping in a bush, we make our way towards the building. We witness someone with worse aim than me. I'm just glad I'm not alone in this world. Heading down the long shaft, we take out the grunts and jackals guarding the door with some grenades. And then I got killed by a jackal camping on the other side of the door. 
After serving the local population of jackals some well-deserved plasma grenades, I can safely say that I died to something that no other Halo player has ever died from. The Crazy Marine. Honestly, this guy just got his first kill in over 20 years, and it was on me of all people. So as soon as I reloaded the checkpoint, I showed him who he was messing with. Crossing the light bridge, we come up to that room. That room I have been dreading the whole game so far. So, I did the only thing. I put on my big boy pants, admittedly I put them on backwards first, and then made my way down to that room that used to give me nightmares as a kid when I used to play this game. Getting jump scared by Mendoza's corpse, we find Jenkins' helmet cam and delete his browser history, but not before making a copy for ourselves, of course. I tell you, Jenkins must have had some good stuff on his browser history, as seconds later the flood burst down doors trying to take it from me. Now I would like to tell you that this room was easy, as it was just the infection forms to deal with, but no. These little shits just kept coming at me, and if one touches me, it was game over. I'm dying. Help me. I was in this room longer than I would have liked, but every time I survived the three waves of infection forms, the combat forms seemed to have an issue with that, and sent me back to the last checkpoint, and I have to do this room all over again. Once a few infection forms had entered me without my consent, I watched over the grunts getting unalived by the Flood, and then I made my excuses and left. Even though the Flood don't have guns at this point, they're still pretty hard to deal with. Well, hard enough to send my marine ass back to the last checkpoint. But I used the tactic that I used in the infection forms room, run away and shoot anything that wanted to turn me into a human burger, and that seemed to work for now. And it also worked for the next few areas, so no complaints here. My dreams were slightly crushed, however, upon finding out that the dead marines ahead didn't have the god killing weapon, also known as the Halo CE shotgun. So this adventure must carry on without it, as we made our way to the elevator, only to find that it went down and not up. This is where the fun begins. The Flood now have guns, and our simple run and shoot tactic now involved trying to avoid gunfire. If fighting the coveys was easy peasy lemon squeezy, then fighting the Flood was difficult difficult lemon difficult and for two very annoying reasons. These little bastards, and the stunlock animation. As being stunlocked for long enough caused an infection form to fly directly into my joy department. But not to worry, as I remembered that the next room had active camo, so I thought there would be a 300 IQ play to use them. That was not the case however, as the Flood instantly knew my plans, and decided to ruin my day by shooting me in the back and knocking me off the edge. And then it seemed the game and the Flood were working against me as I got a checkpoint soon after, cementing this event in place. Thanks game. Using what camo I had left, I made a run to the next room and ended up dying a few times here as the Flood's AI is so unpredictable sometimes. Well, that's the excuse I'm going to use anyway. Totally not a skill issue. Making my way back to the room where I saw the Marines die, I saw her. Just laying there. I knew in that moment, I had to have her. So. I decided to hatch a plan to retrieve her. It was quite a simple plan really. I tricked the flood into getting below me and I threw a grenade down this tiny little hole and then I could jump down and save her. Somehow my silly little plan worked and she was finally mine. The weapon that was going to save me. I hope she was worth it as I had to backtrack to get back up to where I was. Grabbing the shotgun seemed to be worth it as I was soon applying the attract flood and hide around the corner with a shotgun tactic and with that I made it to a room where I saw a sight that I never thought I'd see. Honestly. The thought of these marines teaming up with the insufferable, rapid firing pistol goblins made my blood boil. With this new rage flowing through me, I doom marined my way to the exit elevator and find a group of lost marines. I was heartbroken to see Johnson not among them, but knowing we'll see him in Halo 2 brings me hope. When I started this run, I knew there would be tough parts to deal with. This forest run I knew was going to be one of them. I just didn't know it was going to be this level of tough. I had my rights violated more times in this little forest than the whole run so far. The marines were little more than a distraction that lasted all of two seconds. In the end, I decided to ditch the marines and make a run for it. This seemed to work, as before I knew it, I was being abducted against my will by Guilty Spark. Out of the whole game, this is the level I was least looking forward to doing. This mission raised my cortisol to lethal levels. Seriously, doing this level was not a pleasant experience. As I took my first steps into the library, I could already feel the sweat dripping down my back. The flood were coming at me from all angles, like hungry zombies in a buffet line. But let's just say, I was the main course. I knew right away that the key to success in this level was to have nerves of steel, lightning fast reflexes, and a healthy dose of insanity. And guess what? I had none of that. Maybe a little insanity, as I am playing Halo as a marine.
God, what am I doing with my life? Just like the Fast and Furious movies, the waves of flood never seem to end, resulting in me dying more times than a noob with a sniper rifle trying to get clips for his COD no scope montage. Do you want to know how long this mission took me? I was here for five hours. Five hours of dying over and over again. The flood here are relentless. When I said at the start about having my human rights violated, I wasn't wrong. My stress and pain levels were high. My enjoyment of the game was at an all-time low. I mean, this was like I was constantly edging my brain to aneurysm. I couldn't tell you how many times a run would be going so well, until one of the little poppers decided to take a chunk out of my buttered baps. I would be stuck dying in the same spot, sometimes up to 40 minutes at a time, and I had four floors of non-stop flood, but I refused to let this level beat me. With each respawn, only fueled my determination even more. The flood may be tough, but they haven't met me. A mentally ill gamer with nothing to lose. Armed with nothing but my true love, aka the shotgun. I channeled my inner doom slayer, and I got to work. Through blood, sweat, and an amount of tears I will not disclose to you, the final door was now in sight. I mean, yes, it may have taken me over an hour to get past the threshold, but but we did it! Running towards that index, and against all odds, this marine had conquered the library on Legendary. Marvin Mabuto would be proud of this lone marine. That night, I submitted a police report stating that I had been violated and that my human rights had been abused. And to this day, I have had no reply. Funny enough, before I started this run, I recorded this level first, just to see if the run was doable. And after five hours of pain, it was. Completing the library sparked life into this run. And I knew if I could beat this level, then maybe beating the game was possible. If you would like to see my live reactions and suffering in this mission, then click the video on screen now. After beating the library, I took a short break from the game, but we were soon back at it, ready to destroy the mental health I had just recuperated. Being transported once again against my will back to the control center, I t pose in front of Cortana and Spark. After conquering the library, I feel like I've earned the right to assert the dominance that's radiating off me. After the floating testicles betrayal, I take a laser to the face, and we kickstart this mission with one health. Amazing. I felt a feeling of relief, however, that I would fight alongside marines once again for this mission. That feeling lasted all of six seconds, though, as they got wiped out as soon as I opened the main doors to the control room. This was pretty much our first obstacle of the mission, but we put on our big boy pants and dealt with it. And by dealing with it, I mean I threw an illegal amount of grenades until one elite was left, and then I noob comboed him. Heading up, we throw the sniper rifle off the tower and show off our phase clan credentials by totally hitting all eight bullets I had in the rifle and not miss a single shot. Making our way down the structure was just as easy as climbing up, just minus the ghost. With the shotgun, elites were nothing now. I mean, I still died a lot, but with the shotgun, only a few shots were needed, and the elites were put down. Waiting for us at the bottom was our leaving party that I did not agree to, with a wraith and a golden boy waiting for us. Oh boy. So I did what any normal person would do, and that was grab the rocket launcher and go to town on the elites and the wraith. Stealing the nearby banshee, and like a sickening plot twist, I became the annoying wildlife, as I blew up some grunts and elites that came out of a door that I wanted to go in. Coming up to the first generator, Cortana tells me about overloading the beam with my shields. I think she still hasn't gotten used to the idea that I'm not the chief. Escaping was going to be an issue here, as as soon as I stepped into the beam, I was swarmed by sentinels, and I made the rookie mistake of not bringing a plasma pistol with me to this intervention. But after a few deaths that got added to our ever-growing number of deaths, we managed to make it out. Just about. Returning to the Banshee, and dealing with some cubbies who were jealous of our new ride, I came up to a room where I'm not gonna lie to you, I was stuck here for almost an hour. My lack of health really played a part here, and the fact that after I cleared this room, the game decided to kick me right in the balls and not give me a checkpoint. So if I died past this room, I'd be sent right back and have to do it all again. Fantastic. Once we had finally made our way forward, we encountered the Flood doing their daily service and killing the Covenant for me. Honestly, I don't think they're all that bad, they're just misunderstood. 
But despite the stress of the rest of the game ahead of me, a positive, if there was such a thing as one, was that I was actually getting good at killing the Flood. Actually, that's total dog shit. As the Flood decided it was time for another snacking on my baps and came after me. Running away like a true man, we come up to the bridges again, where the Flood and the Covenant seem to be having a disagreement over which bridge is better. Fighting the two factions separately was not an issue, but as soon as they are in the same area together, all bets are off. As I can't hang back in camp like I do with the Covenant, and I can't run around like a shotgun wielding madman like I do with the Flood, something had to change. What that was, however, I have no idea. Regardless, I'm just a little marine, and I'm not the biggest threat here, but everyone seems to think that I am. These next few parts were a real slug to deal with. Never in my life have I seen so many shotgun flood charge at me, and I actually feared for my long-term health because of it. So, I done what any sane person would do in this situation. Run away and lead them one by one to a buckshot to the face. It took me 40 minutes to realise that I could do that, by the way. While the feeling of progress felt great, and as soon as the dopamine engulged my brain, the game chose to rupture my feelings of joy once more. As bridge number two not only had the flood to deal with, but Banshees decided to join this party. I decided to focus on the Banshees first, as they could stunlock me in a mid-shootout, and an infection form would take the opportunity to take a big chunk out of my nads. I didn't have to worry though, as the local rocket launcher flood must have also gotten annoyed at the Banshees and took it upon himself to reduce the Banshee population. Well, I only came to that conclusion when I found a destroyed Banshee that was on the bridge. And I found a rocket launcher. Leaving the bridge behind us, we make our way down the elevator shaft, and I fell off because I got jump scared by a bunch of infection forms. Why are they on this lift with me? Escaping the shaft of doom, we encountered the remains of Fireteam Zulu. Oh, if you didn't know, these flood are the marines that stayed behind when you first come this way on the Assault of the Control Room mission. Little fun fact for you. My fun was soon put to rest, however, as a grunt one-shotted me. Little bastard. So I got my revenge, stole his ghost, and left. The Halo 1 ghost controls like a drunk grunt on ice, as I struggled to take out two jackals. Oh, the game thought it would be a good idea to remind me that they exist. But after struggling to take them out, we trade the ghost for a warthog and climb this 90 degree angle. I need to find a flock of banshees that I need to borrow to get where I wanted to go. We take out any unworthy banshees and the wraith trying to shoot me down. This part totally didn't take me 15 minutes of dying to do this. Before we made our safe landing and made our way inside, only to discover an army of flood guarding the second pulse generator. On a scale from one to ten, my friend, you're fucked. I was stuck here for a while, just throwing myself at the flood here, hoping for a different outcome. I almost gave up here, but I kept trying. Clearing the generator isn't that bad. It's just when we blow it up and all the flood come pouring in, there is just so many of them. And with a small space to run, it doesn't end well 90% of the time. In the end, I just blasted my way until I was left standing. This run really tested my ability to play this game. Getting back into our flying machine, we blaze past an argument between the Covenant and some rocket flood. I think I know who the winner is there. We say farewell to our flying machine before crossing the bridge of fuck you. I was starting to get a little worried here as my ammo wasn't great, and for some reason in this mod, you can't take the assault rifle off the flood. Maybe my marine only wants his assault rifle. Exiting the tunnel, I see yellow dots on my radar and got a little sus about that. But it turns out, a squad of ODSTs were above me providing cover fire. It was nice seeing friendlies after so long. The ODSTs helped me take down the Banshee that was giving me a spot of bother. And by that, it, uh, it caused me to die a few times. Once that pest was out of the way, I made my getaway on a nearby ghost. Blazing my way past everyone before stealing another Banshee and making our way to the final generator. We blast some Sentinels with my rocket launcher, and I finally T-pose once again, asserting my dominance as a marine with the biggest balls on the ring. Cortana finally got the location for the captain, so he can finally get his password once again for his porn hard drive that we have been working so hard to get into. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, while writing this script, it was written over many weeks while I played the game, and I completely forgot about the porn hard drive plotline I started, so he here we are picking it back up once again. Spawning in, we once again flash our sexy ODST armor. I could see the end as we gaze upon Captain Keys. The password had never been so close. We watch and laugh as a grunt gets chased by a flood with no arms. <laughs> we grab the active camo and make a run for the giant hole in the ship. It was at this point I started to have a panic attack with our survival rates for this challenge now dropping to a staggering minus one. My blood pressure was up 69% by this point, but I made sure to stay focused and that I didn't go more insane than I already am. And by that I mean I hid behind this thing while the flood and the cubbies duked it out. 
once the winner was claimed, I third partied the winners like I do in Fortnite and left the area so no one third parties me. This next part caused me some issues, but nothing like we haven't dealt with before. I just kept throwing myself at the flood hoping for the outcome that I wanted. Fuck! That may be the definition of insanity, but I must be insane if I'm doing this challenge run. Anyway, we pull off some pro gamer moves and move on to the canyon of, oh god, why am I doing this to myself? Dealing with the carriers and infection forms that dropped onto me was easy. After throwing the ring supply of plasma grenades at them and picking up the stragglers with God's handgun, I then came across the flood picking a fight with a pair of hunters. Now, as the chief, I would normally run through this part, guns blazing, but that's not what I'm going to do here. Instead, I'm going to sit and watch the fight and see who comes out on top, and then kill them before I do a runner. What a brave boy I am. That was until a hunter saw me and took a shot, and then I was out for blood. So, I grabbed the nearby sniper rifle and put my FaZe Clan skills to use by sniping the hunters and then running away towards the grav lift. That is after I blast my way through some more flood first. Once I got back inside the ship, I started to wish I was back outside of it. The narrow corridors and holes in the roof made fighting the flood a bit challenging, but nothing like setting up a tent and camping around the corner with a shotgun can't handle. I was stuck here at this hole for a while, as so many flood kept coming down. A few deaths later, I found myself running into some coveys making their last stand. So I did the decent thing, and threw some grenades at them. Once that mess was cleared up, we made it to the hangar bay, where I played catch with some elites in a turret, before I ran up and forced a buck shell into the face of the survivor. The run up to the captain was fairly easy, with more hiding around corners and blasting the flood that came around. We eventually made it to the control room. The game must have felt pity on me, as there were so many health packs around this area, that my worry for low health was not that big of an issue. Once the flood pouring out of the room were put down, I once again asserted my dominance over the captain's corpse by T-posing so hard that his face exploded, giving me access to all of his passwords for the hard drive that we have carried all the way with us. Now, all we needed was to escape this ship and make our way back to the Pillar of Autumn. Though, that was easier said than done. After triggering everyone to charge into this room, I did the manly thing and hid at the back of the room. I then picked off who remained like the dirty third party here I am. This is where things are going to get really hard now, as all the Covenant from this point on are Spec Ops, and the Elites have stronger shields and can now throw grenades. Not my idea if you're good time if you ask me. I spent ages trying to get out of this corridor, playing hide and seek with an Elite. Eventually, I decide to use my monkey brain for a change, and I use the Grunt's exploding fuel rod to weaken his shields before I put the final shot into him. Next, I had to get to the Banshee. I first tried to jump onto the Phantom, but then I got shot down by the elites on the floor below. I then tried to walk down, but there was an army of Spec Ops coveys blocking this hallway. In all my years playing Halo, I have never noticed this before. After many failed attempts to get past the hallway full of Covenant, I thought screw that, and went back to reevaluate my strategy. It was here that I came up with a brilliant plan of leg it. And with that great forehead play in my head, I went for it. And what do you know? The first time I died. But the second attempt, we managed to get to the Banshee, and close off mission 9. Now, it was time for the final mission of the game. The Moor. We kickstart the mission by crashing our banshee into the side of the autumn, and t into a wall, and also hide an event like a sus little boy, before dropping down and taking care of the sentinels blocking our path. Oh yeah, this mission is now a four-way between myself, the Flood, Coveys, and now the Sentinels have joined the fight. But there was something that I noticed so far playing this mission. There were no Jackals. Now that the galaxy has celebrated the fact that Jackals have been removed from existence, that is until Halo 2. The serotonin that my brain was feeling didn't last long, and in fact, turned into aneurysm fuel. As the Flood seemed to have been turned up to 11 for this mission, as the first real encounter with them was not a fun experience. As always, I resorted to throwing more grenades than an Olympic discus thrower. After resetting the checkpoint more times than I can count, we make our way to the cafeteria, only to find two hunters waiting for their lunch. Now, I would like to point out that the Flood did drop a pistol, but I made the decision that my weapons would be the assault rifle and the shotgun as this mission has a stupid amount of ammo for them both. So tackling the Hunters was pretty much one quick game of Ring Around the Rosie, and the Hunters were pretty easy to deal with, as you can still exploit the Hunters, as when you get close they will try and bash you with their shield, and if you just loop them by going to the right, you can just unload the bullet hose into their back, and before long, they will just collapse. Honestly, the Hunters in this game are really a joke. 
but I'm glad they got buffed in the later games. After exterminating the coveys around the bridge by mainly taking out the fuel rod grunts. Seriously, who in the Covenant military thought it was a good idea to give a grunt a fuel rod gun? One or two close calls later, we T-pose once again in front of Cortana to display the massive balls we have gotten playing this game and getting to this point. Cortana started the download of the captain's main hard drive of porn, but Guilty Spark clearly had an issue with this, like everyone else had T-pose in front of, and stopped the download as he wanted all the porn to himself. So we hatched a brilliant plan to blow up the ship to stop him downloading the captain's servers full of porn. Okay, I'll stop this porn line story now as I have no idea where it's going. One hop, skip, and a jump later, we get rushed by a bunch of flood, but nothing a few well-placed grenades and hiding behind a pillar can't solve. Avoiding the firefights happening all around us, we made it back to where the game started, the Cryo Bay. I decided here that it would be a good idea to be on Team Flood and help them take down the Sentinels, as their beam is not good for my long-term health, as I found out earlier. This corridor was an erect penis to try and get past, as the flood just never seemed to end. Just like the Fast and Furious- Oh wait, we already made that joke. But honestly, I feel that sometimes the flood in this game have endless spawning, as they just would not stop coming down this hall. What must have been over half an hour of dying and trying to move up one hallway, we finally make it to the vents and becoming sus one more time. Rapidly sidestepping the firefight between the Coveys and the Sentinels, we were finally here. The Armory. I chose to go with the shotgun and rocket combo. Rocket for the engine cores, and the shotgun for the flood. It was time. Every moment of this game had led to this moment. The engine room. Now this room alone took me over an hour and a half. I first tried to go my normal path on the right side and instantly got hit by endless spawning flood once again. So I quickly decided to go to the left side and jump up to the panels. And may I say that this thing, I don't know what this thing is, caused me to reset checkpoints so much, as the tank controls on the marine are so janky that they kept either jumping over the damn thing, or I hold W a split second too long, and the marine just leaps to his death. It was as if the marine himself didn't want to do this part of the game, and I can't blame him if I'm honest. But we were eventually able to take out all four engine ports by doing the open one up, run away and blow it up method, and run back to the start of the area to spam the checkpoints. I was now on the edge of my seat. My hands were sweaty. Mum's spaghetti. I, I was nervous. I, I don't know where I'm going with that one. It was now time for the Warthog run. This had to be the most tense Warthog run of my life. As a couple of lucky shots and it would have been over for me. But luckily, I'm a professional driver. And we managed to make it to the point and watch Echo 419 do her best impression of Captain Keys' flying ability. Now I thought I was going to die here and I would have to redo this whole Warthog run, but upon exiting the hog, I got pushed out the pathway and managed to avoid the Flood and the Elites fighting, so we got to the Longsword without dying. We outran the Flood, t one last time as we left the Autumn. We get to see the legend that is Sergeant Johnson fighting an Elite for an assault rifle, before they hug it out and the ring explodes. After countless deaths, blood, sweat, and mostly tears, I finally did it. I beat Halo 1 Legendary as a Marine. Playing this challenge took me over 23 hours of in-game time to complete, and over 350 gig of footage, and the deaths, my Jesus, the deaths, man. I'm certain the death total must have been close to a million by the end, and all of this just for your viewing pleasure. I hope you enjoyed my suffering. If you made it to the end of this video, the UNSC thanks you for your service. And a special thanks to the mod developer, Dreary Muscle 5 for creating such an amazing mod and ruining two weeks of my life. 10 out of 10 would do this again. Now, with this complete, I can relax and not worrying about doing another marine run for a good long... Ah, oh, damn it.